Ebro in the morning, Laura Stiles, Rosenberg, Tech Nine, the legends on the program. Give yeah. it up. What's up? What's up? What's up? Yo, friend of the show, uh, self-made, damn near billionaire at this point. What's going <laughs> on with Strange Music? How's everything? Oh, everything's wonderful, man. I got a new album coming out December 9th, man. It's a big time. Yeah. Last album, uh, you put out an album every year at this at this point, feels pretty like. Much, pretty much, pretty You're much. Consistent pretty much. with that. And then we go on tour and we sell the merch and we yes, take the tour buses around and we... Yes, sir. Paint the face and spit these bars on. <laughs> and make tons of money. And make tons and tons. You're never gonna beat the killer bus, though. Let's yeah, just be yeah, real. Yeah. Let's just be real. That's that was the bus. We just uh we just I just took a 15 hour flight from uh uh Australia and New Zealand, man. We just got off tour, so I'm chilling. How do, right how, do they, how do they mess with strange music overseas? What's the, what's the vibe like? They love us, man. They love us. You know what I mean? We've they been get it. Different... They yeah. fully get it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Technicians are uh, connected all the way around the world, man. You know, as one brother. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just came up with something right now, sitting next to Tech Nine. So I what? Just, it's it's kind of. I think it's genius. You may say it's stupid. I think it's genius. I'll say it's stupid. He could say it's genius. Now, well, it? just make a decision. Be honest. All right. It. What's stupid? You. Tech Nine and your brand and strange music is like the not psychotic and much better musically, no disrespect, insane clown posse. <laughs> weird. No, weird. Speaks to some certain part of people's spirit. Yeah. Puts out the music, goes on the tour nonstop, has its own culty world. You yeah. guys are one notch away from having, well, why not a strange music day? Like a... A festival. They, what's theirs called again? We're gonna have one. There's called there's is called the gathering of the juggalos. <laughs> Why not yeah. the much more normal but still lit <laughs> uh, gathering of the strangians? I think people uh, put us together because of the face paint. You know what I mean? But and you've done juggalos before, right? Yeah, I've done the gathering. You know, like every, they fuck every, with you. Every, every year they call me. So they fuck. So their people do. So wait, am I wrong? Are there similarities business wise from how you guys operate? You think or no? our business model pretty much came from. Uh, E40, Sick Witted, yep. and, uh, you Out know, Travis music. Travis was more into uh, Master P's way. You know what I'm saying? Back then. But we didn't know anything about Insane Clown Posse. When well, we of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, well, you yeah, guys yeah. are almost contemporaries, time-wise. Time yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like um, um, they invited us to be on a tour some years ago. Their, um, their fans invited us on this uh, tour with Bone Thugs and Harmony, ICP, uh, uh, Cotton Mouth Kings. I so, okay, what the what was that like? What was what is playing was, for that crowd like? It was it was the worst at first because when we started, they didn't know <laughs> us. So were they just they, chanting? When, when, when I, no, when I got out on stage on our first show in uh, Cleveland, the, they all the juggalos turned their backs on me. Damn, and disrespect. Then, and then. I used to start my show off with this thing called stamina with a machine gun. Stamina, I'll be dumb if I ever be. Take away by the demons I never be. What the weather when I bust a rhythm, I come with the hitters. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they Bars. all slowly turned around. It was so wonderful. Oh, you saw it happen yes, in front I of saw you. It. Cause I they saw was it. like, this shit, this dude is spitting right yes, here. We sir. gotta give it up. Yes, sir. And you know, now so you get nothing but love from so the juggle. So we, we turned them around. It took like it took like every like it was like three shows before it like spread. You know what I mean? Like we gotta see Tech Nine. But a couple of shows, like our first one in Cleveland, we turned them around. Our second one in uh, Columbus, we turned them around. I forgot what the third one was. So real quick, and then before we move on from this, but I am fascinated because we sat there. You've watched the Juggalos documentary yes, before, right? Yes, it's a bizarre yeah. world, right? If you're not yeah. in that world, it definitely looks like some, whoa, what is that But shit? what's so bizarre about it, though? Everything. Like, what? How yeah. can, just, can you describe for her what gathering's like? The, and the what gathering, they, they usually have it on, like, private grounds where the um, police can't come in. So some okay. chicks are... Um, uh, getting, uh, you know, hammered by a li line. It's called the Raw Dog Line. Oh, you know wow. So a game, It's a public game, man. You've seen it. They're fisting. Wait, wait, fist. No, I ain't no, talking no. about the fisting. I'm no, no, talking it's a about penis. No, no, no. I'm no. talking about a penis. Like a, a live no, both, game but, but that's what I'm saying. I've heard no, that. No, I think he meant just a, he just meant sex. You know okay. what I'm saying? That's this thing called... And it's all being shot. Wait, hold on. What was the next thing you said? It used to be this thing called Drug Bridge where they can have any kind of drugs on it. You know what I'm saying? They sell it. You know what I mean? It's like the police are closed out, so people are just walking around naked. When we first saw it, we was like, what the hell is this? Yeah, but how do you get how do you get the police to be closed out? I don't understand that. I think it's private property or something yeah, no, like that. You know what I'm saying? No, we need to be honest. Well, I've always had, in the back, and I've never voiced this, but I've Wow, voiced. here we go. I know where this is going to oh, go. here we go. It's because they're white. I don't know. I, mean, I, think, I think a lot of... Uh, I've never seen festivals. a black gathering of of with black artists and black kids yeah. be allowed to be private. <laughs> that that in, is probably in true. a public. Now listen, I've done summer jam for the last however, mm -hmm. yes, sir, yes, right? Sir. 
when you go to the electric zoos, circus, whatever, they know the drugs is going on. They mm-hmm. even have people going around testing your drugs to, to make, make sure, sure it's, it's the right drug that you're they taking. They don't yeah. do that at hip hop shows or anything nah, black. Nah, let me let me test that weed real quick. You going to jail, fam? Yes, sir. You going to jail for selling? Yeah. You might go to jail if you do too many. Mm-hmm. I'm and, and look, it is what it is. It has something to do facts. with private property. I think. I think they used maybe to have it's on that. The... Maybe yeah. it's that. Maybe yeah. ain't no black people doing it on private property. Maybe we should try to. I want to see. I want to so like but, see. But, it, but I'm sure it won't be a raw dog line. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, no, no, no. raw dog line. No, no. <laughs> Cool. You didn't ever, you didn't ever participate in the raw no dog line. Way, okay, I just want to make sure you didn't jump okay, in. Okay, hold on. Can, can no, I just, no, no, get, can I just in. get a right, couple sure. more because I just want to know what else. I'm very curious. All right, about keep this. going. Ask so, away. Okay, so there's raw dog line. There's the drug bridge. Uh-huh. What else? Uh, wrestling, you know what I mean? They do a wrestling show yeah. as part of it too. Naked ICP's wrestling? Very, no, it's they nah, do a regular nah, nah. regular Inter- wrestling. Interestingly, from because I'm a big wrestling fan. Interestingly, from a wrestling standpoint. The wrestling thing that they inject is actually quite normal. Okay. They do a pretty regular wrestling show, but it's as part of their whole thing. Got but it. it's not just that. It's also just the look. People look different. They have a certain look. Yeah. Would you say? Faces, faces, faces are painted. Everyone's faces are painted. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like Burning Man to the next level. And oh. people come from all over the world. Burning Man is all tame. over the world. Burning Man is real tame. No, no. This is you got to watch the documentary. All right, I'm gonna watch. I it. I can't wait to do Burning Man. Wow. It's like an art show, but yeah, yeah I want to go there too. Yeah. I can't wait. The Have you been show. invited to Burning Man? Not yet. Not yet. We're about to be. But your plan is to be. It's yeah. expensive. The you can thing afford it. And so, in your back to what Rosenberg's initial kind of question was, you know, your blueprint of an independent artist mm-hmm. touring, selling merch. Um, you know, we've we've saluted uh, the likes of Wiz Khalifa, who you know built a similar thing of touring, and totally. but that was built kind of based on a blueprint that you had already kind of started exactly. some years ago. Exactly. Um, now it's commonplace. Yeah, it is. Right. It, the, the music industry has moved in the direction of what you started. How long ago now? Um, almost seventeen years ago. We seventeen started years ago. Yes. Um, of not only the merch, but you also. Printing, distributing your own merch, exactly. selling your own merch, exactly. your own trucks, your own yeah. sound stage, your own yeah. sound system. I mean, yeah. everything is your own from... Yeah. ICP did a lot of that, too. You know what I'm saying? They did a lot of that. You know what I mean? So that's why I understand why he was saying that it's kind of similar. You know what yeah, I mean? Because did. you can't hate on what they built. No. Well, that's, that's why I say it, so because crazy. I never had an interest in it, but I had to sit and respect it, because I exactly. was like, damn, they have their own world. Yes. yes and that do. is now a common thing. They do. Like you just mentioned, Chance. There are a lot of artists right now who don't need radio play. They don't That's need right. anything. They mm-hmm. operate in their own world. Now, yeah. I love, by the way, I love it. I think it's the best thing for hip-hop like that. You know, I used to have this argument with people. They were like, you know, um, you know, hip-hop's going to die. I was like, hip-hop will never die it's because never it die. will always evolve exactly. back to the underground. And mm-hmm. when it goes to the underground, it goes back to the people. That's where it started, and that's where it should always be. Yes, sir. It's going gonna, it's gonna to continue to revive itself every time without mainstream media, without radio play. Hip-hop's never needed that. Yeah, we were one of the ones that stuck our necks out first back in the day, you know what I'm saying? There wasn't a lot of people on the road. Like, it was like us, atmosphere, and stuff like that. You, you mean, the, to be a, yeah, the true touring acts. Yeah, yeah, Because people, yeah. people actually don't really remember this, man. And this is, like, so obvious for those of us who've been around for a long time. Hip-hop was not really a touring business. No doubt. Like, those old tours, fucking Fresh Fest and all those tours, mm-hmm. that was it. And like, that was, that and was they the way, would do their little tour, and, and that, that was be done. It. And that was done by Budweiser, no or doubt. you know what I mean. It was and, a big and, company, and it was all big arenas, and it was the top ten biggest acts, and that was really it. It wasn't like it is now, where 80 percent of our industry tours all year exactly. round, one tour after another. That's well, so new. Would we would we say that maybe the roots? Roots were big. Roots were big, the and roots it. were always on tour. The roots were always on tour. Talib Kweli was always on tour back in the day. Yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't a lot of us though. So when no. I saw when I saw like ASAP Rocky and and uh, Danny Brown and uh, Scoobway Q doing a tour, you know, I was I was, ha- I was happy to see that man. I was happy to see a lot of young brothers getting out there and a lot of people getting out there touring like Mac Miller and everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, Wiz Khalifa. Everybody just started. And I don't know if it was because music pretty much became free. You know what I'm saying? And they had to get out there. You know what I mean? Due to um, uh, so there's streaming. not a place to make money, right? Yeah, right. You gotta streaming. find ways to make money. So, you know what I mean? But I'm glad that, because one thing uh, Be Real told me in Switzerland, he said, man, they'll never be able to take away the live show. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah, no one right. Cyprus, yeah. Cyprus began to just they, tour and yeah. tour and tour, too. Yeah, yeah, Well, yeah, yeah. and Cyprus was early, too, because they were such a big part of uh, Smoking Grooves. They had Smoking Grooves. And, but they also did cross-genre tours. Yep. And you they, they, they were out they, of... would, they would tour with, you know, metal and punk and different. No doubt. No yeah. Doubt. That's all similar to you guys. Like, they were able to... Yeah. 
That's it's still, interesting that, what acts are capable of doing that that kind of weird crossover. Like, yeah, it's wonderful, man. Music is supposed to, beautiful music is supposed to be beautiful music, no matter what genre it is. Or strange, we music break down or strange yeah, music. Exactly. Yeah. Strange is beautiful though. Yeah, facts. Be real, just hooked up with um. Chuck D and they got Prophets of Rage. Yeah, yeah that's right, right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? What a random combination when you think about it, right? Wow, well, now that we keep so going cool. out names, imagine, you know how much touring Public Enemy was doing back yeah, then. Yeah, right? exactly. They did a good amount. And they, they did, did a, good. you know, with Anthrax, and they did a lot. That was, yeah. I mean, I, you forget about that. Right. In the but even 80s. that, it was still different, though. It was still a bigger, like, it wasn't, it's hard to it describe. It wasn't independent. It wasn't yeah, independent. Yeah, exactly. Like, now it's a, a, you get to a level of, if you're an artist now who has 1,200 people in each city, you yeah. tour. Yeah, it's even like less, five hundred. Public Enemy talk. started with ten thousand, uh, whatever yeah, they were. At. Yeah, yeah, man, they, they were, were arenas like at the beginning. You know what I'm saying? I was going to the show. Uh, would they be in KC? Yeah, yeah, they were humongous. Kemper Arena, man. Oh, they would come play Kemper Arena. Wow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, how many people have tried to come buy your business from you at this point? Uh, I mean, trying, how often does it happen? It's happening right now. I can't say who. Right, but, right. you know what I'm saying. It's when does right when now. does Tech Nine go? You know what? They can't buy us right now. You know what I'm saying? They can uh, they can help us, but they can't buy us. You know what I'm saying? We ain't ready to sell. We got too many new artists and everything. We ain't ready to sell. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And the we fan still... base is stronger than ever. Yeah, it is, man. It's growing. It's growing. You know, with 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 a lot of the mainstream success, a lot of a lot of them, you know, try to. You know, Last album brought us a Kendrick Lamar record that did very well for you. Yeah, it did. It brought us Fragile. Yeah, Kendrick love Lamar. Fragile. <laughs> Congratulations, Kendrick. By the way, to Pimp Butterfly Platinum. I got a, yeah, and I got I got a gold plaque for that and uh, for Fragile. Yeah, for Fragile. Wow. And then right after that, Hood Go Crazy with me, Two Chains, and yeah, uh, that's Bob. Right. That's right. You know what I mean? That was a great record too. Yeah. So now this new one, everybody but me is gonna give me a you know what I'm saying platinum plaque. I think. What uh who's on this new album? Any any names? Yes. Like, dropping December yes. 9th. What's the name of the album? This, the album is called The Storm. My very first album in 96 was The Calm Before the Storm. Mm. So I knew um, 20 years later, if uh, I named this album The Storm, it was going to push me to do the best music I could possibly do, and I did it. And I know I'm supposed to say that, but um, it's real. What makes you say that, though? Uh, because I'm always feeling like I have a chip on my shoulder and I have to prove myself because I'm the, the weird kid, you know what I'm saying? Because I, mm. you know, I look different. I paint my face, this, that, and the other. You know what I'm saying? My imagery is a lot darker and less... You know, uh, it's not easy to swallow to some people, you know what I mean? But I won't change it for the world because they're going to have to accept all of me, not just one dimension of me, you know what I mean? But when you got that other dimension going up, you know what I mean? Like hood go crazy and fragile, you know what I'm saying? Um, people tend to try to say, you should just do that one thing. But I'm three, you know what I'm saying? I'm not one. So they got to accept all of me. So on this album, I have three levels, you know what I'm saying? On the storm, it starts, uh, the first level is called Kingdom where all the narcissistic music is, you know what I mean? Um, uh, the second level is called Clown Town. It's a lot darker and zanier, you know what I mean? And the third level is called G-Zone, where it's more gangster and uh, gritty, you know, like mm. my old, like my first album, uh, The Calm Before the Storm, you know what I mean? So I wanted to bring all my characteristics in this once again to let the new people know that the king, the clown, of G is still here, you know what I mean? How how is how are the younger hip hop fans um, responding to you? And when you look around your shows and your tours, and you have new artists that you're breaking, mm -hmm. um, when you look at some of the movements out here, you know what I mean. Um, with some of the more melodic music, whether it's the Yachty stuff or the little Uzi stuff, yeah. and them touring and them 21, stage diving. Twenty One Savage. Twenty One Savage. I just went to a Young Thug and Twenty One Savage show. What'd you yeah. feel about it? Uh, I couldn't believe how many kids were there. I wanted to see what crowd, what crowd it brought, because I wasn't hip. You know what I mean? Um, you know, uh, I became a fan of Young Thug. You know, after laughing at some of his early music. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we, you know, I used to. Be we was, I was there with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah, but yeah. now everybody was laughing. Like, Thug, what are you talking about? Right. We can't hear you. You know what I'm saying? So we all laugh. But after a while, that melodic stuff, you know, what I'm saying, start getting to you. You know what I'm saying? And then I wanted to see him do it live. And when I got there, Twenty One Savage was on. And he did this song called Stunting on, I mean, not Stunting, uh, Something on My Ex Chick or something, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I forgot what it is, but the whole crowd knew it. I'm looking at all the white kids, all the black kids, all the gangsters, every, it was like a melting pot. I was like, wow, this, this is, is beautiful. It. This is beautiful. And then Thug came out and the whole place went up. Split in half. But it made me smile, man, because I congratulate these young dudes, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 
A lot of people talk about Yachty and this, that, and the other. I mean, dude's 19, dude, you know what I mean? And it's like, if the kids like that, let them like it, you know what I mean? Just do you and get yours, bro. Also, you know why, why, don't, why are people going to realize that, like, I understand the Hip-hop is everything, man. And it's everything, mm-hmm. and it deserves to grow the way other yeah. genres grew. Yeah. Like, it's just, let it grow. It's just us who were blessed enough to grow up um, with all different types, like, the boom bap, the backpack, you know what I'm saying? Gangsta with um, NWA, this, that, and the other, you know what I'm saying? Rock him. We had all that, you know what I'm saying? We Even we, even the more pop stuff, the PM Dons. Yeah, and the, PM Dons. I mean? We had it all. You know, we had Rodney O and Joe Cooley. We got all that, you know what I'm saying? We got uh, Just we had Ice. CNC Music Factory, fam. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think you were one notch too far. Why? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Why? I, I wouldn't just call saying. them hip hop. They weren't hip hop. But so people hip-hop tell, hip-hop. tell Freedom Williams that. <laughs> well, yeah. no, I didn't say Freedom Williams couldn't rap. You weren't seeing everybody would... dance now? I mean, of course I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was dancing to it. Yeah, no, dancing to it for sure. I was dancing to it. I no, wasn't doing that type of music, but I was dancing no, to it. No, but it just it just frustrates me sometimes. I mean, I, I have to answer this. So I think Ebro too, like half of our life mm-hmm. is answering questions about hip hop, right? So this so that's weird, right? Yeah, but you, see, I'm I'm different than y'all. Like I'm for them doing all the music they want to make, create. No, you and, just want to hold them to a fun. standard. That's I just okay. Want, I just want if you consider yourself a rapper, I'm like, oh, okay. Exactly. Let's see what you're talking about. They Let's get to it. these bars. They Let's need see, let me see what this is. That's let me okay. See, I'm fine me, with that. Let me, see if okay. you could, let me see if you can ride this beat. Let me see if you can rhyme like this. Let me see what your style is. But some is of like. these guys, some of these guys, they say they're not rappers. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's why the, a lot of them Uzi Bird came up here and was like, I'm a rock star. I was like, oh, we'll decide when you're a rock star, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we'll decide. Yeah, yeah, Did you yeah, tell yeah. them, do you play an instrument? Do yeah, you play a like, guitar? Rock stars, I knew that. Yeah. You know, they get busy. So funny, too. Rock star did become a word that people think you could just use. You could just title yourself like it's a genre. Well, they think because you fuck mad chicks and do mad drugs and jump off the stage, you're a rock star. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, people yeah. throw the word levels, legend around level. really loosely, too, though. Yeah, legends a loose. Legend. Rock stars loose. You can't, you can't ask a dude to rap that says, I just want you for one night. You can't ask I him to rap. Yeah, yeah. rap. I you just can't. had him, I had him, I grilled him and grilled him. We've been grilling him for months. He uh-huh. came with some bars just yesterday, jumped on the Flavor in Your Ear joint. He did? And he did pretty yeah. good. He did, he did pretty damn good. And I was, I as people described it on social media, they said I look like a proud dad. Really? <laughs> because I don't want, I don't want none of these kids to fail. Yeah, no doubt. Like, I don't, that's not what we're here to do. I'm here just because this is hip hop and what I'm accustomed to in hip hop is the pressure of like, yo, if you are going to be a part of this, you got to uphold it and make sure that it's meaningful. Yeah. Because for so many of us, it saved, I mean, I can look around this room it and saved my many life. people I've known a long time, Everybody. it saved, literally, it saved yeah. It saved lives. my life from, from boredom. Well, it saved you from <laughs> I'm your white, mom's I'm basement. white in America, exactly. I would have been all right, but it saved me from yeah, boredom, yeah. guys. But it also but it also gave you, gave no, all of us gave all a of place us of belonging, yes, too. Yes, for sure. Yeah. And a multi like hip-hop is the first culture in American music that was literally, uh, maybe jazz, but... Literally, it was it was a multicultural experience at every level. Mm-hmm. Right, right from the art, from the dance, from the DJing, yes. from the you know the producers. Just everyone involved were coming from all backgrounds, and that's why we yeah. But a lot of these young, a lot of these young cats, man, you know what I'm saying? They don't really know. You know, it's, it all depends on your parenting, man. If you my kids, they got I was I took them to Hawaii for last Christmas and last New Year's Eve. And um, I'm going through their iPods and playing their iPods, and it's Curtis Blow in it. It's uh, damn, your kids uh, are tight. Africa Bambata and the Soul Sonic Forest. You know, I'm like, why? why how do y'all know? They say, Daddy, you played all this when we were young. I'm like, damn. So it's that's who dope. you teach. That's so dope. It's who you teach. Yeah. So who to say who's Yachty's parents were? You know what I'm saying? They probably didn't play. Yo, Biggie how about or this? Pac. DJ Prince Paul told me his son name drop is Lil Uzi Vert's DJ. Really. I was like, whoa. Yeah, that's interesting. Wow. Yeah. So you know that there's something there. They're just trying to find their own way of, of doing it. Which that, yo, there's a lot there. Their and I, I just get so sick of people being old. And I, here's another correction. That's what it is. Some people want to say, y'all need to consider it, it not hip-hop. Okay, let me give something to you. You need to tell people when they ask what kind of music you like, stop saying hip-hop and start saying you like 90s hip-hop because you don't like hip-hop. A yeah. lot of people out here say they love hip hop. They yeah. don't. Yeah. They love ninety one to ninety six. Exactly. And that's that's it. It. Exactly. And they compare everything. Listen, to and that. I admit it. I'm blessed because of my career. I've had to stay abreast of no everything. Doubt. No doubt. But there's a lot of good shit. There's as much good shit right now yes. as there's ever been. 
So yeah. I, I just get frustrated when people are like, man, y'all gotta pretend you like all that shit. People's idea of hip hop, their favorite hip hop, that's what they think it should be. So if you like that one thing, you just stay in that lane. Leave these guys alone over here. Let them let the kids have what they want. And they're dishonest too, because I'll say you right now, I'm the biggest boom bap head of all time. Totally. It's my life. Exactly. And if someone brought me a record right now, I was like, Rosenberg, what do you think? And they play me straight boom bap, I'd be like, it, but it's like retro. It's not like you're not you're not moving it's with the retro. times. You're not you're not creating well, not only the music. That, but we already had great. Well, I had version. that. We already had that. What do you got that's gonna? That's help gonna. Us? I'm, I'm gonna exactly. play that instead of Code of the Streets. No, I'm not. I'm gonna listen to Code of the Streets. <laughs> yeah. People people put music with a time in life when they were when they feel the most when they feel the best. You know yes. what I'm saying? So people say, Tech Nine, your um. Uh, app, they, they say your Angelic album was the best one. You know, I'm well, like, how, are and you if crazy? you ask how old they were, they were 14, yeah, so that's why it was yeah, the best I was like, one. Are you crazy? I was sloppy as hell on that record, <laughs> but it was a beautiful record. You know what I'm saying? This ring was on there and everything. They said Absolute Power was my favorite. I said, After special effects, you know what I'm saying? After all sixes and sevens, how you can how can you say that? I got songs like Speed em on my last album with Eminem just going, bah, 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 you know. How can you say that I was better back then? They just what? had emotional attachment. But they yeah, emotional. that's what I'm saying. They have an emotional yeah. attachment to it. So when they say this is the kind of hip hop I like, you know, and that ain't real hip hop, you mm. can't really say that because it's been changing for years, man. When when Soldier Boy first came out, people was talking crazy. When Master P first came yeah. out, people was talking crazy. Cash money. Yeah, the, cash let's let's yeah. be clear. Let's All be clear. Day. There was one time though I could argue we did kind of get it right when the haters may have gotten it right. Which time? Ringtone rap was pretty bad. Which one? That mid two thousand Soldier Boy time. White tea. You didn't like White T? <laughs> that shit didn't last. That was the that white was the was shortest. Like I'm not, white tea I didn't. But White T, I wouldn't even quite call ringtone rap. It was more like um like it was in the same genre, but like that yeah, there but was that, that also kind of that oh five oh six period. You talking went, about wait. you talking about Fabo Nim? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, and um Laffy Taffy. Laffy Taffy. Yeah. D four L. Yeah, D four L. Yeah, but that also then I would come back and I would say yeah, but I remember when Miami Bass first came, mm -hmm. and people tried to say that Luke Skywalker and them wasn't making hip-hop records because yeah. it was Miami bass. They were, different. though, man. They, they were. But, they but were. Miami bass, you could... Uh, I guess I'd have to go look through the lineage and see if I could draw a line between ringtone rap and something else that I understand. Because with Miami bass, you can tie it right back to Africa Planet Bambata, right? right? So there's mm -hmm. this tie-in to all the classic shit and Malcolm McLaren and everything that was happening in the UK. So With ringtone rap, I don't know. It felt... It really did feel like what it was, like... No, this is ringtone rap. Like well, it's also, I don't know. I'm not sure. Records, I could be wrong. But there's rap records. Rap, I use the term rap loosely, but there's records that come even now that are what the Vine Stars or whatever that shit is. Those those records that are just like Vine loops that kids get. You know what I mean? Like the juju on the beats. Yeah. And, it, and they create these dances and. I mean, that's also been a part of hip-hop, the creation of dances no doubt. for a long time. So yeah, that, and it's still going, you know what I'm saying, with uh, Millie Rock and everything. All you know that what I'm saying? shit. It's like, it's popular ghetto stuff. And let's be clear. Has anyone noticed that every five years, someone does a Juju record where they combine all the dances into yes. one song? Oh, yeah. Like, like, I have yes. to think of it. Next like, time... Scotty, please write down the dances. Silento. And once there's three big dances, once there's three dances, all right, boom, let's make the song with all the dances. And Silento like, did it. It, 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 it Silento. becomes the biggest yeah. one yeah, 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 of yeah, all yeah, the yeah, other yeah. ones. Like, the, Juju's way bigger than Millie Rock. Way yeah. bigger. Millie Rock's like fucking an underground record next to Juju. <laughs> Fam, right. Silento's record was played every single child's birthday party. Yeah, exactly. Right. Every single one. Silento. Everyone. I, I did a show with him, man, somewhere in Michigan. I met him you know, in, the, in the lobby. He... He said, are you ready? I was like, I think so. <laughs> you think so? I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, 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 I think so. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, are you ready? <laughs> Yo, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell something about... I'm gonna tell That's what he said. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you something about Tech Nine right now. Yeah. He's a treasure. <laughs> He's a treasure in hip hop. Yeah, absolutely. Nine. Love having you around. Love that you're putting Thank out you, music brother. all the time. You Thank always you. come by to see us. Thank you. You're just so and all good. And all this positive convo we just had about hip hop, I must end it by saying some of y'all shit is trash. Let's keep it 100. Why did you go there? Some why, shit is doo doo. Why are you going there? Some shit is that's always fucking true. Doo doo. We just that's had a... it. I just don't want people to think that we just going to let everything slide. Well, that's just bad music should have never. Nothing. What you talking about? Well, yeah, like bad music never slid. If the shoe fits, if it's trash, it's trash. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, just want yeah, you just yeah, want yeah, Ebro. Yeah. You know what it is. He can't be positive for that long. He mm -hmm. needs people to know. Mm -hmm. Like just nah, know. I just don't want people to be like texting me and DMing me. Oh, well, you said give everything a shot, and y'all was uh, oh, no, 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 fam, no, 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 you're doo doo. Beat yeah, it. no, no, you, guys, you gotta just because you have a, you're able to physically record in your house. No, no. Like what happened to uh, OG Mako or Mako? Or OG's out here working. He is. He's out here. He had working. another big record. He he had another record. and He's still working. I yeah. actually I actually really really like that kid. I think I think I think he hooked up with Keith Ape them too, didn't he? Yeah, you know I saying? don't know. That might have happened, but I know he yeah. had a tape, and I know he's got a little following. And he still continues. Because I was work. looking forward to seeing what he came with next, and I ain't really heard nothing. 
Really? How come him? I don't know, man, because, you know, it was like the style of beat. You know, but you guessed it. You know what I'm saying? It was like real turned up. I liked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You was motherfucking right. It was funny as hell. Funny, and whenever you hear someone, this is why I like Yachty, but whenever you hear someone who has a different cadence and a different style. Yeah. And a different that, vocal tone. And a different vocal tone. Mm -hmm. To me, that always makes me get interested. Even yeah. if it's not for me, I love that you, the thing that I hate the, the thing that is trash to me, when you talk about trashes, and this doesn't just come from no-name artists, it comes from artists that we like. Mm -hmm. It's when Drake makes a record a certain way, and, and here they all follows. come with the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing I can't stand. Facts. Or like, you know, and, and Drake, you know, Drake did the Migos record, right? And they helped each other. Drake kind of borrowed from their style, but also he put them on the map to a certain degree. But yeah. the Migos style comes out, now everyone takes me and starts exactly. rapping like Migos. I get but can't do it as well. No, let them, let, them, let them do them. I know it's catchy. I want to do it too, but I, I can't be a rapper. <laughs> what about what about, what about about Ghostface Killer and Action Bronson? You know what I'm saying? See that, see, I don't, see, that was a situation I don't mind, right? Because mm -hmm. if you grow up on someone and you love them and you have natural similarities tone-wise, mm. I really can't be mad at it. That's real similar. But, but honestly... But tell me the truth. Have you spent a lot of time with Bronson music? Uh, not a lot of time. Once you, know you spend any, would you agree, right, Ebro? You'll Once forget, you spend, you'll forget about it. it. It you don't. I would never. I think, confuse I, think him Bronson I enjoy is, what he does. I think Bronson has definitely made records that sound just like Ghostface, but totally. I think he's also made other records that don't have nothing like yeah. exactly, exactly, and records that I truly like. Exactly. So that was in the beginning. I was where you're at. I'm like, okay, he's just doing Ghostface. I get that he's a fan, but then. I think I, I, I think I understand that because designer stopped sounding like Future to me after a while. See? You know, what and I'm I never even heard it, and, yeah. I, and I never really thought designer was that much like Future. And everyone's like, "He's Future," and I was like, "I don't this hear is, it. it." It was his voice. It was it was his voice. I always thought he sounded British on the first record. You know, and I don't you know thought, why. You thought designer sounded. I British? thought designer sounded British. I don't give know why. Me, I thought it was some some <laughs> Give us an example. I don't know. Just the whole his, <laughs> his, his tone on <laughs> that whole song. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I, I think he's just his own dude now. And then when you heard with his second, right, when he came with Timmy, Timmy Turner, Turner, you're like, oh, Turner, he's yeah. different. He's his own There's something happening here I got to point out with Tech 9 What is it? Um, I'm noticing that some of the artists that you you brought up in reference okay. have borrowed from you. Uh. And you noticed it. And well, now, and is now that fact? Well, this there's is some ad libs, and now that he, there's a couple things he just did. There's some ad libs at a Tech Nine <laughs> ad libs. Well, I've been around for a long yeah. time, you know what I'm saying. I don't like to toot my own horn, but uh, a lot of people. So, do, uh, how? I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I, I think. Where I, do, you, do you hear yourself in designers' ad libs? Let's be honest. Uh, no, nah, not you for don't. real, man. Not, not for real. real. You know what I'm saying? I enjoy it though. You know what I mean? I, I've I've done a lot of these styles that a lot of these rappers are doing a long time ago. And I don't want to sound like that, just the old nigga saying, I did that a long time ago. I'm still, oh, no, but... I'm still, I'm still on the up. You know what I'm saying? Well, and, you, and they didn't necessarily hear it, right? Like, no, they didn't hear it. Because you, you're a niche artist. They didn't yeah. necessarily hear it. But yes. I, I think anyone who knows you as a rapper knows you're as experimental an MC as there's ever been. Yeah. You know, you do a whole lot of different shit. You've, mm -hmm. taken, you've used a lot of styles. No so doubt. I think sometimes your influence happens in a way where it's not direct A to A. Yeah. But they just hear it and take it. Yeah. But you're influencing everything that exactly. kind of goes on. The new album is like that too, man. I got I got Boys the Men on a weed song called um, All right. Buddha. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't got, know if you need to do that. I got, listen, uh, listen, you listen, went listen. too far. Take you went I too far. God, no, no, I swear no, I'm God. for it. I'm listen, for it. I'm I got Boys the Men on a weed song called Buddha. You know what I'm saying? I got. At the I got, end of the road. No way. No way. No, the road. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I got I got Marsha Ambrosius on a song called Anywhere. I've been wanting to work with her. I love wow. poetry. Mm -hmm. You know, I got Gary Clark Jr. on the album. You know what I'm saying? Bro, just, your feature game you know is untouchable. Dude, I got I got I got corn on the album. Uh, wow. Jonathan Davis came Dang. through on one called Starting to Turn. I got Problem on One. It's my next single called problem. Get Off Me with Darian Saffron. Any TDE people? What you say? Any TDE people on this one? No, 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 no. I haven't uh, worked with uh, Kendrick Nim since uh, fragile, fragile, but that's my family. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean. J so Rock, et it's 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 so many it's so many different people on the album. You know what I'm saying? And I wanted to show that there should be no barriers. What's man. your favorite? What feature are you most? You mentioned Eminem earlier. You've done Kendrick. What mm. is your most proud feature? And now that you've had Eminem, because I know you wanted that one. Yeah, yeah, what's yeah. the feature you want next? That you 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 just it would be a feather in the hat. Uh, I've been trying to get at Jay Z for a while. I think you mentioned that. Yeah, that's that's gotta happen. Yeah, and I sent him a record on this one. Uh, and, and do you hear I, a word and, back? Do you hear back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jay Brown was working working for me, man. He was trying to get it done, you know. But he was on tour with B. You know what I'm saying? So he kept on saying, "I'm gonna get it to him. I'm gonna get it to him." Jay Brown's my homie. You know what I'm saying? So he so had. It'll me happen in there. one day. Yeah. What you say? It'll happen one day. Yeah, but you know, it's like the beat I chose. I ain't just trying to put niggas on songs. I, I, the beat's gotta say it. I ain't just trying to put niggas on songs just 
for their name or nothing like that. I just want to rap with the best. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like I'm one of them. So I ain't, if I find another beat, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like when I sent Nas something some years ago, he said, I don't like that when I said I'll find another one. That was like four years ago. I ain't found it yet. You feel me? Right. You still listen for it, but you haven't heard yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I right. And so which one would you say you're most proud of so far? It's between uh, the one I did with Roger Troutman on my first album. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A song called <laughs> Twisted. We redid I Want to Be Your Man. You know what I'm saying? It's big for me because when I was younger, when I was um, 12 I, or, or 13, I... I shoveled snow to get money to go buy that record, you know, that music land. Yeah, okay. I danced to it twice in seventh grade so dance. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They played yeah. it all night. Yeah. Wow. So to be able to do that and you come to Kansas City and we record it together, that was a big Slow one jam. for me. That was a big one. Touch the booty, too. That's so tight. Yeah. Just believe it. Good for you. I went for the booty. And after that, um, some years later, you know, because Ice Cube made me want to rap, you know what I'm saying? NWA, DOC, anything that came with it, I got to do a song called Black Boy with a. Uh, Ice Cube and Brother J of X Clan. <laughs> yeah. Yo, you're so hip hop, bro. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Brother yeah, J yeah, excellent yeah. on that too. Yeah. What you say? That's incredible. Brother J, yeah, he killed it too. Oh, Brother J, what you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you say? <laughs> what you say? What you say? Yeah. He's a legend in his hip hop yeah. game. If you haven't done your research on him, please do so. Thank you. Always great to see Thank you. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir.